Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a fantastic game where white's two minor pieces are totally paralyzing opponent's army. On the white side is Soviet Georgian chess player Elisbar Ubilava who won the Georgian chess championship in 1974 and 1986 and played for Georgia in the 1992 chess Olympiad. Ubilava's opponent is Soviet Russian chess player Gennady Tymoshenko, who was awarded the International Master title in 1976 and the Grandmaster title in 1980. Meanwhile, this is year 1974, we are in USSR and Ubilava opened up with e4. Tymoshenko's answer was c5, Sicilian defenses on the board against which white is choosing the Nezmedin of Rosolimo attack. e6 white castled kingside, knight g7, knight c3. Other popular alternative is rook e1 with the idea of meeting a6 with bishop f1. Uh, instead in the game we see knight c3 which is also a popular con continuation. After a6 we see an exchange on c6 and white goes for d4. C takes d4, knight takes d4, d6, knight takes c6. Uh, rook e1 or bishop e3 are more popular strides, but in the game we see an exchange of knights on c6, which actually allows black to establish a strong pawn center by later going for d5. Queen h5, an active jump by white queen with which somehow white wants to provoke weaknesses in opponent's camp. Although let me tell you that at this point there is no need to panic and it's better just to proceed with the development. Bishop e7 followed by castling is a good idea but instead black panicked and played g6 thus creating a weakness. Queen goes back on h3, rook b8, black is hitting on b2 thus somehow making it hard for white to develop this queenside bishop, rook d1, bishop g7, and queen g3. Actually, taking into consideration the fact that this pawn is a potential target, it was better to play bishop e7. But okay, we see bishop g7, and after queen g3, black made a serious mistake and played bishop e5. At least it's better to play e5. And now we will see what's the problem with bishop e5. So we reached the critical position where I'm going to ask you to pause the video and try to find white's brilliant combination. Ready? Turns out that already on move 14 everything is ready to land heavy punches and instead of moving away the queen or I don't know playing f4 white went for a brilliant queen takes e5 move white is going for an exchange sacrifice and now we will see what is this going to give white bishop g5 check king e8 bishop f6 white's dark squared bishop is penetrating opponent's camp with the tempo by first giving a check then attacking the rook and is having a paralyzing effect on black's position this time we see rook d1 with a direct mating threat, bishop d7 and there comes the knight. At the moment the knight is protecting the pawn on b2, but the idea is to jump on c5 from where it will put further pressure on opponent's army. Uh, rook b4, well in case of rook b5 just play c4. This rook can't stop you from intruding inside opponent's camp, if here then just knight c5. After knight a4 we see rook before black is to uh, go for an exchange of rooks. Yeah, when you are on the defending side you should try to exchange as many pieces as possible because already yes the pressure was unbearable, although in this case that type of a strategy is not going to save black from a crushing defeat. h4. Well, let me tell you that instead of stopping g5, you can even just win the pawn on a6. If here the knight c5 
then if here, then e5, cementing the position. In the game we see h4, which is also a decent continuation, but is allowing black to prolong the resistance. Somehow black is activating the light squared bishop, but the d7 square is successfully under control, as well as the d8 square, and there is no way to activate the king and the rook. Now white will gradually intensify the pressure. At the moment white is uh, just strengthening his position, not allowing his opponent to go for a counterplay, and then yes, white will land a heavy punch. Now it's time for activating the king. All black can do is to make miserable waiting moves. a4, rook f8, b4. b4, the pawn sacrifice is allowing white to get a passed pawn on the a file. bishop c8, king d3. At this point let me tell you that you can just play a6, which again guarantees you an easy victory. In this case, of course, Blake is finding time for uh, activating his rook, but soon black pawns are starting to drop one after another, and this position is hopeless for black. Seems like that the pawn on b4 is going to fall victim as well. King d3, king c4 can fall, alright? Uh, instead, in the game we see king d3, yeah. Ubilava is not hurrying to realize his advantage, uh, still black is making waiting moves and finally at this point only in here black resigned. White will now win this pawn on b4 and only then will go for a6, thus winning the game without much effort. So this is it dear chess lovers, hope that you enjoyed this marvelous game. We saw a positional exchange sacrifice which allowed white with the help of his minor pieces to take control over the whole board, paralyze opponent's position and gradually, without hurrying, uh, realize the advantage. So this is something which I would like to call a Python strategy. This is a game played in the style of Iron Tigran. Uh, in the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.